Welcome back everyone and it's time to go Today we are covering the entire timeline of Attack on Titan which includes the final chapter 139 which means the final episode of Attack on Titan season 4 the final season will be spoiled but trust me it's worth it we will explain all the events in chronological order of time making for a story that comes full circle and easier for you to understand now let's begin long long ago when nothing but mere matter existed in the world during a time where countless masses of unknown things came and went one thing survived what is that what the fuck is it ain't ego oh fuck <laughs> This hallucinogenia-esque creature was otherwise known as the source of all living matter. It survived due to its adaptability being in its nature. No matter the environment, it would continue living and continue multiplying. It was the source of titan power and the founding titan. It had the ability to greatly alter the organic life of things around it, as seen by the gigantic tree it was discovered in during chapter 122. This tree was huge in comparison to all the others in the area thanks to this odd creature and this is where the attack on titan world and more importantly life began we are Attack on Titan's universe, there are two primary races that have existed from ancient times, and they are what have led to the current events of the story. Without the nation of Eldia and the opposing nation of Mali, we would have never gotten the story we all know and love. The people of Eldia existed in ancient times as a savage group of people that would raid and harass opposing people's village. The Fritz family were originally a small tribe, however they came into power by enslaving individuals from the communities they invaded and thus became the rulers of the Eldian tribe. One of the people they enslaved was a young girl named Ymir who unlocked the gate to an enclosure one night enabling some pigs to escape. Later the tribe's king interrogated the slaves about the perpetrator stating if the culprit doesn't name themselves everybody would have one eye gouged out. This caused all the other slaves to point at Ymir. She is then set free, only to be pursued by Fritz's men on horseback. Wounded and on the run, Ymir discovers an exceptionally huge tree with a hole at the base. She walks inside for safety from her pursuers, but falls into a pool of liquid due to the unstable footing beneath her. It's here that the surviving source of all matter comes into contact with her, the hallucinogenia, thus making her the first titan in existence. This Hallucinogenia adapted to Ymir's desire to live and how she wanted to protect herself against the ones that oppress her. At least that's what Zeke interpreted it as. Now as Ymir emerged as the founding titan and the first one to have ever been seen in the world, they decided to use her power of the founding titan to rule over the lands and expand their tribe. Eldia's king was so impressed by Ymir's power and accomplishments as the founding titan that he decided to choose her to bear his children as a reward. She bears three kids to be exact, Mira, Rose and Sheena. The three names are later given to each of the worlds on Paradise Island that protected the remaining Eldian land. Ymir was ordered in the name of Fritz to destroy the Malians. They of course had no way to combat the destructive power of a titan at that point of time as well as the regenerative ability of one. However, However, one day, 13 years later, an assassination was attempted on King Fritz. A member from a group of Malian soldiers ordered to kneel before King Fritz suddenly revealed a hidden spear, which he used to try to kill him. However, he failed on his assassination mission, as Ymir jumped in front to act as a shield and the soldier was executed on the spot. But much to the king's disbelief, this wound would actually be fatal 
fatal to Ymir Fritz and she would die. When she died, she discovered what is known as a path. It's another world invisible to the real world where time works differently. Paths are channels that connect all titans and subjects of Ymir together. Ymir Fritz inhabits the land as a little girl. She is capable of creating anything out of the earth of it. She is the cause of the titan transformations and their regeneration by the way as she is the one who molds their bodies whenever the power of the titan is invoked in the real world. Those with royal blood, her descendants, are able to command Ymir Fritz and use the founding titan power in complete control. Paths serve as a channel for the transportation of several things such as memories and the wills from other subjects of Ymir. Flesh and bones are also transported that make up a titan's body and commands from a titan's scream and the power of the titans themselves. Paths transcend physical space and they transcend time as well. Remember Zeke says that it felt like he was there for years upon years but it was all over in an instant in the real world. Now when we go back to the past, without a care in the world after Ymir's death, King Fritz immediately made his own daughters eat their own deceased mother so they could inherit her titan powers and also ordered them to continue reproducing and continue the tradition of children eating their parents so that Ymir's power never died out. This resulted in the formation of the Nine Titans. The founding titan is retained by the Fritz family but the remaining eight titans are inherited by lesser Eldian families obedient to the founding titan and the royal lineage. Those who inherit titan power are cursed to perish after only 13 years just like Ymir Fritz due to the phenomena known as the curse of Ymir. The nine titans are the main ones we have come to know in the story. The founding titan, the armored, the attack titan, the beast titan, the cart titan, the colossal titan, the female, the jaw and the warhammer titan. The nine titans continue to wage war against the country of Mali, eventually capturing the continent and converting the Eldian tribe into the Eldian Empire, continuing their goal of ethnic cleansing. The Eldians used pure titans which are titans not under the control of the original titan, thus unable to execute complex orders but despite that they are fearless, automatically killing machines and likened to cheap weapons weapons of mass destruction. This results in immense fatalities and the annihilation of entire cultures. However, various Eldian clans began fighting for the power of the other eight titans but this was eventually put at ease thanks to the founding titan's power. The Eldian Empire then waged war on Mali with titan attacks in the fall of Lego, the devastation of Monte and the ravaging of Valle, killing hundreds of thousands of Malians in the process. Any refugees who managed to escape were subsequently killed by titans placed in their way by the Eldian Empire. Now when we move centuries forward in the year 240, it is revealed that the world's population dropped even more, this time not through war but because of an epidemic, similar to how the Black Plague in our world killed nearly half of the population in the 13th century. A similar fate awaited the people of the world of Attack on Titan except the Eldians. Now you're probably wondering why. Now you see, due to the King of Eldia possessing the power of the founding Titan, he altered the biology of all the subjects of Ymir to become immune to the epidemic. He essentially vaccinated all the Eldians using the paths. With that in mind, this immunity being exclusive, the Eldian gave them another advantage in world domination amongst the neighboring regions. After this, we now hop on to the 8th century, which is essentially around a 500 year timescape, where quite a lot starts happening. In the early years of the century, Century, Eldia decides to ally with the nation of Hizuru through the son of their shogun, an ancestor of Mikasa. During this time, Titan science was also being adopted into enhancing the military and the overall power of the Eldian Empire. They experimented with the Titan.
Titan Shifters learning more about their powers and changes. The female Titan's ability to harden was also acquired through this means, giving the idea that Titan's biology is very adaptable. Later, human experimentation with a group of Eldians led to the creation of the Ackerman clan, where they were an accidental result of the Titan science, having immense superhuman powers as if they were a Titan in a human's body. These Eldians, though not being of nobility, possessed awakening powers where they can exhibit tremendous physical abilities above that of an average human. Now due to this, they were further designed to protect Eldia's king, acting as the monarch's right hand. Moving on to the year 743, this is when things start kicking into high gear. Carl Fritz, the 145th monarch of the Fritz family, inherits the founding titan and becomes the emperor of Eldia. Unlike his predecessors, he starts to reflect upon the history of Eldia's genocide and civil wars. The king believed that Eldia's sin couldn't be atoned for as they had killed three times over the population of the world in their nearly 2000 year rule. So then he conspires with the Tiber family who had the Warhammer Titan into bringing Eldia's downfall. The Tiber family then gets to work spreading fake stories about a Malian man named Helos. He was said to be a man of legend, the one responsible for slaying the devil of all earth during the Great Titan War. This fake legend let the oppressed Malians stand behind a legendary figure and fight against the monstrous titans, giving them the hope they needed. Essentially, propaganda. They seized their chance during the Titan War between the nobility of Eldia whilst they were busy fighting amongst themselves, as some sided with King Fritz and others didn't. The Malians then turned this civil war into a rebellion and rose up. However, instead of fighting back, King Fritz moved the capital of Eldia, some Eldians and their entire royal family to the island of Paradis, leaving the rest of the eight Titan families behind in the mainland to fight for themselves. He also offered sanctuary to the Shogun clan of Hizuru on the island. Even though most accepted this offer, some of the royals disagreed and remained in the mainland to fight the Malians. With the founding titan absent however, and the abandonment of their king, Mali's rebellions became even more ferocious, eventually leading the Tiber family, who remember were already in cahoots with the king to fall under them. Now with the power of the war a titan by their side, it wasn't long before Marley gained the power of the colossal, armoured, female, beast, car and jaw titan. Using these seven titans, Marley slowly gained control of the continent, putting the Eldians into subjugation. They were only alive as fodder and titan hopefuls for the Marley military. King Fritz then used the power of the founding titan to create and order countless colossal titans to form the free wall on Paradise Island, Maria, Rose and Sheena to protect what was left of Eldia. In order to stop the war, King Fritz sends a message to the people of Mali, telling them that if the surviving Eldians are not left alone, then the colossal titans in the walls will flatten the entire world, basically threatening the rumbling that Eren does later. This action ends the war, letting Mali control most of the world with the power of the titans. The nation the nation of Hizuru is also decimated but not completely destroyed due to their association with the Fritz family. The rest of the Eldians outside Paradis were conquered by Mali and turned into second class citizens, forced to stay in small designated zones. They are also forced to wear armbands, a constant reminder of their Eldian low class citizenship and of the sins that their race had committed in the past. As time went on, the Eldians grew more and more ashamed of their heritage as the Malian government started spreading propaganda, changing the history to their liking. They said that Ymir Fritz gained the power of the titans through a deal with the devil of all earth, once slain by the great Malian hero Helios. She is the cause of genocide, destroying anyone but Eldians. 
she became a true devil. With guilt in the hearts of Eldian children, over the decades of the propaganda, it obviously won and made them extremely embarrassed by their past and it made them feel grateful to the Malian government instead for having mercy on their people. This basically allowed the Malian military to gain a lot of further soldiers and titan candidates who wouldn't they betray Molly. Anyone who did decide to have the balls to defy Molly would be turned into pure titans and sent to Paradis or to wander the world. On the Paradis Island side of things, Carl Fritz used the power of the founding titan to erase the memories of every Eldian, from their origins to their true nature of becoming titans and even the knowledge of the world. They all forgot their history and became like newborn babies. They were then fed misinformation that in the year 743, titans appeared in the world and humanity's last hope was hauled up in Paradis Island with the safekeeping of the walls. These walls were built by the royal family and therefore deserve respect and understanding. The only ones who retained their memories of the past were some amongst the nobles and the Ackerman family and those of non-Eldian blood like the Hizuru clan. These unaffected families by his rule gained noble status inside the walls as long as they swore to secrecy after the king's request. However, the Ackermans and the Hizuru gave up their status, turning against Karl Fritz and as a result were hunted down. This was because they rejected the idea of world peace and the oppression that Karl was doing. Effectively, Karl Fritz was switching the supposed oppression from one group of people people just to the other, essentially taking away the choice of Eldians and making them caged birds. Sadly, this rebellion failed as the Ackerman and Hizuru clan led to their prosecution, where only a few survived living among the common population in hiding. The king also vows that the founding titan has renounced war, basically taking a vow which prohibits any future inheritor of the founding titan to go against the pacifist will of the 145th king. Sometime later in Mali, the Titan Biology Research Society is founded. After researching the nature of the Titans and the subjects of Ymir, they determine that the power of the Titans is carried across paths, which are invisible to the eye, with all the paths coordinating at the founding Titan. The people of Mali named the founding Titan the coordinate of these paths. Plans are made for the underground districts within the walls, but these plans are eventually abandoned and also another interesting thing you might have forgotten in the year 780 a homeless Eldian girl is given the name Ymir by the leader of a cult of Ymir Fritz. The girl joins the cult and becomes a figure of worship. In the year 785 however the cult of Ymir is found by the public security authorities of Mali. They are led through Mali in chains and are exiled to the borderline of Paradis Island where they are all turned into pure Titans. Meanwhile, in Mali and the rest of the world, with Eldia out of the picture declaring their own form of peace, Mali with the remaining Titans became the new world power with control over all the geopolitics. The Eldians in Mali, likely due to also having their memories erased during Karl Fritz's purge, were easily contained and controlled by the Malian government. Okay, thanks Adil. Now let me take over from the 9th century of the attack on Titan in history. The year is 806. Date January 26. And Grisha Jaeger is born into the Eldian camp of Liberia. Three years later, his sister Faye Jaeger was also born. They both live a peaceful life alongside their parents who are doctors and Grisha is expected to follow suit in the profession. However, in the year 817, the Jaeger family's life is turned upside down when the young Grisha and Faye run out of the intermittent zone to watch the blimps take off. They are caught by two two public security officers, one of them being Eren Kruger. The other officer takes Faye away whilst Eren beats the crap out of Grisha for leaving the zone and not wearing their armbands. Grisha then returns home only to find out that Faye is dead, fed to the dogs 
of the second officer. Grisha's father then starts teaching him about the fake propagandist history of the Eldian people's genocides and gets educated about why the Eldians must suffer now for their sins of the ancestors. But Grisha doesn't agree with the teachings as he believes people shouldn't be punished for the sins of their ancestors. A few years later, in 819, Eren Kruger inherits the attack titan from a predecessor, whilst Grisha went on and kept living his life as is and became a doctor. But once again, his world would start to change when a patient tells him the true fate of his sister and how she was fed to the dogs, brutally murdered for the grave sin of wanting to see airships just take off. This gives Grisha the final motivation he needed to join a faction called the Eldian Restorationists. With his work alongside the faction, Grisha gained critical intel about the Eldian history through a spy inside Marley called the Owl. He also met with Dina Fritz, a girl of royal blood, the last Eldian with royal blood in Mali, and got married to her. A year later in 825, Grisha and Dina have a child together and name him Zeke Jaeger. In the same year of Zeke's birth, all the way over in Paradise, a grade school teacher tells his young son, Erwin Smith, about the suspicions he's had regarding the erasure of humanity's memories when the walls were built. Erwin then relays this theory to his classmates, which results in the arrest of his father, who is tortured and killed for spreading this theory. His death is, however, covered up as an accident in a distant town. But Erwin's curiosity doesn't let up and he he joins the survey corps to find the real truth behind the walls and why his father was murdered. During the next two years, Frida Reese is born to Rod Reese and his wife, and also Tom Casper inherits the Beast Titan in the year 829. Yuri, with his inheritance of the Founding Titan, also took on the vow to renounce war as done by Karl Fritz. Afterwards, Kenny Ackerman, a criminal in the underground city of the Walls, discovers that Yuri and the Reese family are the true royals of Paradise. He tracks Yuri and his brother Rod Reese down in an attempt to kill them. Yuri turns into a Titan at the last second and catches Kenny in his arms. But Kenny did not give up after this, even drawing Yuri's knife and pointing his gun at him. Rod then insisted that Kenny had to die. But Yuri spared his life. He said that as an Ackerman, he deserved to point his knife at him due to the persecution that the monarchy had put against him. As we mentioned earlier, the Ackermans got done dirty, literally hunted into near extinction just for trying to defy the royal family. Due to this heartfelt apology and experiencing the true power of a titan, Kenny instead become Yuri's right hand man and joins the first interior squad, ending the persecution of the Ackerman clan. After this encounter, Kenny then heads back to the underground city hidden beneath the Sheena district to see his sister Kuchul Ackerman. However, she was already long dead, only leaving behind a son named Levi Ackerman. <laughs> Fucking Beyblade, motherfucker. Kenny proceeds to adopt Levi, but tells him that he is just a close friend of his mother. Levi then trains with Kenny until he is strong enough to survive by himself, at which point he was abandoned by Kenny. While Levi is beefing up his muscles in Paradise, though, things are advancing rapidly in the rest of the world. As the Industrial Revolution rages on, so does the need for Marley to have more resources to build their cities, airships, and machine guns. Strapped for resources, they they turn their head towards the island of Paradise, which is abundant in untouched natural resources. The Marlians had zero information about the island ever since Carl Fritz put up the walls. And so, they create a special force within the military with Eldian children to make use of the Seven Titans and gather information regarding the island and their military power. The Owl learns of this and informs the Restorationists of Marley's plan. Grisha then makes his son Zeke join this program to gather information in Eldia, spotting it as an opportunity to get in contact with the island. However, Zeke, during training to pick out the warrior candidate to inherit the Titan powers, performs very poorly. He is just simply too weak compared to the rest of the kids. On one of the training days, he finds Tom Ksaver, the beast titan of that current time, playing catch by himself in a yard. Tom asks Zeke to play catch with him and starts complimenting Zeke for his throwing 
performing skills. Zeke hearing praise for the first time for anything physical gets him very excited and they then form a friendship together. Another day of training comes and this time Zeke's parents are watching him. Their presence does nothing to encourage a better performance by Zeke and he falls behind once again against the other warrior candidates. And to rub salt into Zeke's wounds, his father runs away in disappointment after witnessing his hope for LD's resurgence be crushed by Zeke's poor physical abilities. The only time Zeke feels any sense of happiness is when he plays catch with Tom, where he tries to cheer him up by telling him that warriors are kind of a dumb idea and calls the program a stupid idea altogether. Tom says that he just wanted to study the Titans scientifically and he isn't much of a soldier. This gives Zeke a bit of confidence so he proceeds with the program, until one day he was cleaning the warriors headquarters where he overhears the Marley authorities were about to discover the location of the Eldian Restorationists. Understanding what the consequences would be, his family and himself would be sent to Paradis as pure titans. He goes to his parents and begs them to stop, however Grisha just insists that they cannot. They must continue for Eldia's sake. Zeke then turns to the only other person in his life who showed care for him, Tom Kaseva, and then reveals everything to him. Kaseva then manipulates Zeke into turning his parents in so that he could save himself and his grandparents. This not only sent the restorationist effort to be extinguished, but also cemented Zeke as a loyal Eldian subject to Marley, which led to him becoming a warrior and inheriting Tom Kaseva's beast. Titan. Grisha is the last one to be turned into a pure Titan before being let off into Paradis. However, just as he is about to be turned, one of the guards reveals himself as a guard and inheritor of the attack Titan and frees Grisha. The Owl, or Eren Kruger, his real identity, passes on the attack Titan to Grisha alongside the mission of the attack Titan to reclaim the founding Titan and restore Eldia to its former glory. Grisha, using the Titan powers, reaches War Maria, where he is found by a soldier called Keith. Shadis. Shadis then imprisons Grisha in Shiganshina for the crime of entering Titan territory. In prison, Grisha says that he remembers his name and says that he remembers being a doctor so he wants to work in Shiganshina and help out as an epidemic is raging inside the walls. Grisha, with his advanced knowledge from outside Paradis, is easily able to cure the people affected by the epidemic. One of his patients was a beautiful waitress named Carla alongside her parents. They both fell for each other and got married, which leads to Eren Jaeger being born just a few years later. During these years, Grisha gains a name amongst the nobility of the walls as a medical expert and starts treating people from the interior, gaining vital information needed to locate the royal family and the founding titan. Mikasa, Historia, Annie, Armin and Reyna are also born during these years. Then in the year 837, Grisha Jaeger discovers that the Rees family are the descendants of Karl Fritz and thus the real royal family. However, he chooses to abandon his goal of capturing the founding titan in order to spend more time with his new family after failing his previous son Zeke. A few years later, Frida Reese, aged 15, ate her uncle as a titan, thus inheriting the power of the founding titan, continuing her family's duty. In the meantime, Zeke inherits the beast titan from Tom, whom he refers to as his father. During the spring of the year 842, Gabby is then born. The following year, the power of the titans was passed down to five more soldiers. The female titan was given to Annie Leonhardt, the armoured titan to Rainer Braun, the colossus titan to Bertolt Hoover, the jaw titan to Marcel Galliard, and the cart titan to Pieck. The power of the titans proves devastating even in the hands of young children, much to Marley's delight. The warriors are to be dispatched to fight an enemy country of Marley, swiftly crushing it and its forces, surpassing their predecessors as the new Titan hosts. This mission was called the Paradise Island Operation. 
Moving on another year to the year 844. After Levi, Furlan and Isabel have joined the scout regiment, the former thugs plan to kill Erwin Smith and steal some documents during the scouting mission, as this was the job they were assigned to. However, during the 23rd exterior scouting mission, Furlan and Isabel are killed by an abnormal titan. After Levi kills the titan, Erwin reveals he knew all along of their true intentions of the trio and the documents were fake. He encourages Levi not to regret his decisions. Levi then decides to stay in the scout regiment and follow Erwin's orders from that day forward, as he thinks about Erwin's words and believes that he is able to gaze up at something he cannot see and then decides to follow him. In the year 844, Mikus's home is attacked. Her parents were murdered by human traffickers who attempted to kidnap and sell their daughter in the capital's underground human trading market when she was just nine years old. She is subsequently kidnapped, however is saved by none other than Eren Jaeger, who kills two of the assailants. Mikasa herself then awakens her dormant Ackerman power and kills the third and final culprit, herself. When Grisha Jaeger arrived with members of the military police brigade, Mikasa was adopted by his family. Meanwhile, hundreds of titans commanded by Zeke Jaeger's Beast Titan seizes the capital of an enemy country of Mali in just a single night. Moving on to the year 845, the Paradise Island operation begins, where Mali decides to send out their warriors named Berthold, Reiner, Annie and Marcel from the Liberia internment zone to actually commence their journey to Paradise. Now, the plan to retake the founder was a long-term strategy undertaken by the Malian military and its warrior unit to take the founding titan and eradicate the people of the walls. As they all travel through the night, they eventually need to rest and Marcel tells Reiner that he wasn't actually supposed to inherit the titan's power. He apologizes for prioritizing his brother's life over Reiner, as Marcel knew how grueling and difficult this mission would actually be. When the time came for the warrior candidates to receive their titans, Marcel began to worry about his brother's life. In order to keep Porco alive, Marcel managed to elevate Reiner's reputation in the eyes of their Malian superiors whilst diminishing his brother Porco's reputation. Now unfortunately, a titan emerges from the ground and attacks Reiner before the matter can be further discussed. Marcel pushes Reiner out of harm's way in a moment of self-sacrifice, only to be caught and eaten. Bertholdt and Reiner have no choice but to flee as Marcel is eaten alive by Ymir's pure titan when she was made a titan from decades ago. She gains the power of the jaw titan. The following morning, with their friend dead, the rookies prepare for the end of the mission. However, Reiner decides that they should continue, shifting his entire personality and perspective that he needs to become a person that can lead all of them to save the world, as he internally wanted the acceptance of his father and the Malian government as he was being rejected his whole life for being who he is. Now whilst these events are occurring to Reiner and the others, in Paradise, Attack on Titan Chapter 1 begins, with Eren waking up from an unknown dream and he declares his intention of joining the survey call. However, we find out later that this dream was actually a future event of himself through the Attack Titan. He was seeing memories of the future. That's why he mentions to Mikasa regarding her hair and he starts crying. Now upon learning from Mikasa that Eren wants to join the scout regiment, Grisha Jaeger is more accepting of the idea than their mother Carla. Grisha asks his son why he wants to leave the walls. Upon hearing Eren's answer, Grisha announces that he will be departing, telling a bewildered Carla that there is no point in trying to stop an inquisitive mind like Eren. Before he leaves, he promised to show Eren what he has been hiding in their basement when he returns. At this point of time, one of the reasons Eren wanted to join the survey corps is because of the many books Armin showed him during childhood regarding the outside world and so much that they had not seen due to their restrictions and no freedom. So as Marley's mission continues without Marcel, they realize it's going to be more difficult since they needed the Jaw Titan's high level of stamina and transportation ability
cuties. So they then switch their plan, in which Annie will transform into the female Titan to carry Reiner and Berthold whilst bringing pure Titans behind her. The female Titan was able to exercise a degree of influence over the pure Titans through a scream based ability. Annie Leonhardt used this ability to gather Titans on Paradise Island to the walls during the fall of Maria. Berthold then transforms into his colossal Titan form at Shiganshina district which shocks the population in complete fear as they had never seen a titan this big. He kicks a hole in the district's gate. The attack leads to an immense amount of concrete and debris falling everywhere across the town. However, to disguise himself as one of the civilians to uphold the Mali mission, Berthold immediately after the attack stopped his transformation as the colossal and back to his human form. However, in the process of his attack, the debris fell on Eren Jaeger's house, destroying it with his mother Carla inside. She is trapped and her legs are crushed. Eren and Mikasa attempt to free her, but they are not strong enough to lift the debris holding her down. This is when Dina Fritz's pure titan enters the city, finding and eating Grisha's wife Carla in front of Eren and Mikasa. Dina Fritz was sent by none other than Eren himself, as he reveals in the final episode and the final chapter 139 that his path was set in stone. Dina Fritz was about to eat Berthold but Eren commanded her using the founding titan power from the future and moved her into the direction of his own mother. Eren was never free and this had to occur for the world to be free of the curse of Ymir after his death. Now going forward Reiner as the armored titan breaches the inner gate forcing the Eldians of Paradise island to retreat to Wall Rose. He also becomes a spy for the mission so transforms back to his human form and pretends to be a civilian. The three Malian warriors are then seen in a refugee camp together after Annie wakes up. They run into a problem however of not having identification but they eventually find a man who killed himself and the three decide to collude their stories together as cover for their lack of family records. Coincidentally before the attack that Berthold and Reiner carried out on Paradise Island. Remember, Eren's father, Grisha, was also making plans. Grisha Jaeger had the attack titan, which meant he could see the future memories of what was to occur, although it was limited compared to his son Eren's use of this power. Whilst all of the nine titans could receive memories of past inheritors, the attack titan could also receive memories of inheritors yet to come. Zeke Jaeger described it as the power to transform transcend time. These memories led those with the attack titan to move forward fighting for freedom. For example, Eren Kruger received memories of Grisha Jaeger telling his son to protect Mikasa and Armin Arlet. Although he did not know who these memories were from, Grisha Jaeger knew of the founding titan's bloodline restriction from the future memory of his own son Eren. Grisha Jaeger held the attack titan for almost 13 years and Wall Maria came under attack by the warriors of Mali. So he decided the time had come to negotiate with the founding titan or take it by force if necessary. In chapter 121, as Grisha arrives at the Reese Chapel, he pleaded with Frida Reese for the sake of Eldia and the Walls, but his ideology and proposal was downright rejected. Grisha asks the Reese family to kill the titans attacking the Walls at once before his whole family is killed and eaten. But Frida Reese implores that the people of Eldia must not escape their sins and pay for the price of who they are as judgment towards their own race. Grisha proclaims that since the royal family is bound by Karl Fritz's vow, he will steal the founding titan away from them. However, despite his threats, Grisha is unable to bring himself to kill the entire Reese family, horrified at the thoughts of what he intended to do. Grisha is then pressured by the future holder of the attack titan, Eren Jaeger. Eren and Zeke appear from the future using paths and the ability of the founding and attack titan. Eren calls his father prophetic and practically commands him to commence the path he was destined for. He reminds his father of the memories of his family such as his dead sister Faye, his comrades who died before him and the mission he was entrusted to fulfill by his predecessor. Grisha then transforms using the attack titan and overpowers Frida, stealing the founding titan and 
killing her along with the rest of the family. However, he spares the father who escaped as this was Eren's intention since he plays a vital role in the story in later events. Grisha Jaeger is left horrified by his actions. On the verge of hysteria, Grisha asks his son Eren if this is what he wanted. Will this really fulfill their dreams and create peace in the world? How can such violence be a necessity to achieve such a dream? Grisha also saw the rumbling and is horrified. Thus, he begged his other son Zeke to stop Eren. But then he realizes he is left no choice but to pass the founder and attack Titan on due to the curse of Ymir. Eren was only sending a certain number of memories to his father to make sure the goal of the rumbling he had in mind was enacted. Anyways, Grisha tells Zeke that Eren's plan will succeed. He hugs Zeke with affection and apologizes for being a bad father. After this event, Eren's father had to find Keith Shadis because he needed his help in finding his family in the refugee camps. They eventually find Eren but discover that Carla has been eaten by Dina Fritz. This mentally again destroys Grisha Jaeger and he can't handle the pain from learning the suffering of everyone. But then he remembers what future Eren told him when he was facing the founder. He doesn't like the fact that Eren will be the inheritor of the attack titan but is left no choice. He instead tells Eren something simple. Get revenge for Carla and then they go into the woods. Grisha gives Eren the key to the basement and then injects him with the titan serum telling him that their memories would teach him how to use the attack titan and founding titan abilities. Eren as the pure titan then eats his own father Grisha inheriting both the titans. However Eren will not remember any of this. He won't even know he ate his own father or be a titan shifter until later on in the series. Minutes pass when Keith unexpectedly hears a thunder from the direction that Grisha went with Eren, prompting him to venture into the forest to find him. He finds Eren lying unconscious with no sign of Grisha Jaeger, confused by Grisha's sudden disappearance. Keith nevertheless brings Eren back to the shelter to rest with Mikasa and Armin. Now remember, Rod Rhys was spared by Grisha Jaeger, so at this point of time, he heads to the farm to collect Historia Rhys and Alma. Rod Rhys was in love with Alma. He believed he could tell her anything. Sometimes after Rod had gotten married and had children of his own, the two started a secret romantic relationship. Alma eventually got pregnant with Historia, causing her to be sent away to live on her parents' farm so that her child would not shame Rod and his reputation of being royalty. So since this attack happened, Rod decided to get them. So he introduces himself to Historia for the first time. As they begin to make their way to the carriage, they are quickly surrounded by the military police first interior squad, who has been sent to suppress Alma and her daughter Historia. With Historia being an illegitimate Reese here, the council thought it's best to get rid of both of them. Confused, Historia called out to her mother after Kenny Ackerman grabbed her, causing her to deny any relation to Historia. Taken aback, Kenny questioned Rod Reese if he knew either either of them, to which he lied, saying that he did not. Kenny then killed Historia's mother Alma, and Historia began to call her out again, causing Alma to cry out and while she's dying she expresses her regret of having given birth to her daughter, after which Kenny was going to do the same to Historia. But before he can, he makes a deal with Rod Reese that she will change her name and join the survey corps, hopefully to die in battle. They then give her a different name which was Krista Lenz. We are now in the year 846. A reconquest is carried out by the royal government which includes culling the mass unemployed which the government can no longer afford to support. This results in the population decreasing by around 20%. This includes both of Armin's parents. Now moving on to year 847, after two years of investigation, Rainer, Berthold and Annie uncover the truth behind the royal family acting as a false monarchy for the royal government. However, rather than challenging the king of the walls, the three of them decide to register in the upcoming training corps in order to gain higher positions and join the military police brigade, in turn giving them easy access to the interior where the real genuine royal family lives. Eren Jaeger, traumatized by the death of his mother, he's determined to
to enlist into the survey corps, seeing it as a way to gain strength and getting revenge on the titans. And so the 104th training corps begins. Meanwhile, Kenny Ackerman acts as a leader for the anti-personal 3D maneuvering gear squad, a select group of soldiers drawn from the military police brigade. They're made to oppose the survey corps. However, that was revealed to be a false justification presented by Kenny in order for the assembly to approve it. Their ultimate goal was to achieve Kenny Ackerman's ambition to attain the Reese family godlike power of the founding titan. During the winter months, Ymir transforms into a titan without Historia or Krista as she went by that name at the time. Ymir saves Daz from freezing in the snow whilst they are training. Once the three of them return to the camp and regroup with everyone else alive, Ymir makes a promise with Historia that one day when Ymir reveals her secret to everyone, she will take back her original name and life. We now move on to the year 848. During the 34th expedition of the survey call, Ilsa Langia meets a titan who mentions the subjects of Lady Ymir. She tries to ask the titan about their origins before angering it, leading to her own death. However, she took note of the phenomena. Now in the year 849, the following year, her notebook containing information on the encounter with the talking titan is recovered by Levi and Haunch during an expedition which is taken back to aid in the titan research. In this same year, Zeke discovers a way for the Beast Titan to gain new skills by transferring his spinal fluid to Eldian victims. With a scream, he obtains the ability to transform these Eldians into Titans and can also command these Titans even in the absence of the sunlight. The Titan Biology Research Society, who are unaware of Zeke's royal heritage, are unable to explain this occurrence. Now as you guys can already tell, this video is a long long one and it takes us even longer to make it and so it wouldn't have been possible without the help of gamersubs giving us that energy that we needed to keep moving forward and so i just want to remind you guys that by using the code abd and clicking the link in the description you guys can get 10 percent off some gamersubs it is super tasty low in calories and it's just as simple as adding a little bit of powder to some water giving it a good old shake and you're sorted. Personally, I recommend the citrus lemonade or the blue raz flavour if you're a fan of sour drinks like myself. Or you can, you know, go a little bit wild and find your own crazy favourites. So once again, don't forget to use the code ABD and get yourself 10% off some gamer subs. But now let's get back to the timeline. In the year 850, now five years after the initial attack by Reinar and Bertolt in the fall of War Maria, the 104th Training Corps reaches its completion. Mikasa, Reinar, Bertolt, Annie, Aaron, John, Marco, Connie, Sasha, and Krista all graduate in the top 10. The next day, however, disaster strikes once again. Reina, as the armored titan, penetrates the outer gate of the Trost district, bringing in the first titan invasion for five years. Eren is swallowed by a titan, but he resurfaces in his his attack titan form and begins slaughtering titans throughout the city, enacting upon the promise he made when his mother died about killing all titans. For the first time ever, a titan is shown killing another titan in public within the walls. Meanwhile, the rest of the survey corps engage in battle with the stray titans in what would go down in history as the Battle of Trost. They created the plan to use Eren in his titan form to carry a boulder and plug up the hole created by by Bertolt's colossal titan, handing mankind behind the walls its chance at their first win over the titans. This is also the first time mankind has ever reclaimed land from the titans within the walls, giving them a glimmer of hope for their survival. During the ongoing fights, Marco overhears Reynar and Bertolt discussing their attack and Eren trying to block up the hole that they made. Because of Marco's incredible skill of picking up on things quickly, Reynar apprehends him. And 
Annie shows up and Marco begs for her to save him, but the three then strip him of his ODM gear and leave him to be eaten by a titan. After the end of the battle, a cannonball is fired at Eren by the military after they believe him to be a titan enemy, as well as Mikasa and Armin for assisting him. However, Eren unwillingly activates his titan power once again to spawn a skeleton to protect them out of desperation. The decision is then made for Armin to convince the military that Eren and his titan power can be of use to them, and that they will relay any and all information that they have, to which Commander Pixis adheres to. At the end of the day, Eren falls into a coma. Now that humanity succeeded in their battle, two remaining titans that survived, named Sunny and Bean, are taken into custody for Hange's experiments. Two days after the attack, in order to stop any future pandemic, the garrison and training corps gather to collect the remains of dead troops in the region. This is when Marco's body is discovered by John. Eren then awakens from his coma, in a cell three days after the Battle of Trost. Captain Levi and Erwin Smith then interrogate him about the secrets of his father's basement back at home in Shiganshina. Eren then declares his desire to join the scouting division, in which Levi accepts to take him under his own command so that if needed, Eren can be killed by Levi's hand as he, well, he's the most capable. Eren is later escorted from his underground cell held on trial before a military tribunal judged by none other than Commander-in-Chief Darius Zakli. He is eventually given over to the custody of the Survey Corps. Eren is then taken to the former headquarters of the Scouting Division as a new member of Levi's squad, to an old castle where he will be kept prisoner. Over the period of the next month, Eren would use this remote base as a place to practice his titan shifting abilities under the watchful eye of Levi. Hanja tells Eren about her experiments and plans to try communicating with titans after the phenomenon that happened with Elise years ago, and so she gets Eren to agree to help her with her experimentation. However, during the early hours of the next morning, Annie and Reinar murder the two titan test subjects to stop Hanja gathering any information. To stop any suspicion about her true allegiance, Annie hands in Marco's old ODM gear which she previously discarded during the Battle of Trost. Later that day, 21 trainees from the 104th Training Corps join the Survey Corps, whereas Annie Lionheart opts to enter the police force in the Stohes district. One month later, the 54th expedition outside the walls begins. However, it's disrupted as Annie, in her female titan form, intercepts them as she searches for Eren. She's subsequently captured by Erwin in a forest, but her titan screen calls nearby titans to eat her, resulting in her escape. Using the titan vapour to disguise herself, Annie retreats using ODM gear, killing one member of the survey corps, and then transforms into a titan yet again, killing three more. Eren, in his attack titan form, battles with Annie's female titan. He ultimately loses and she attempts a kidnapping on him, but Eren is saved by Mikasa and Levi. They retreat back to the Karanes district, where they are forced to give up possession of Eren to the royal capital. In the meantime, Annie returns to her role in the police force, but she is beginning to be under suspicion from Erwin Smith, who starts to think of a trap to try and capture her in the Stohes district. The next day, Mike Zacharias leads members from the 104th training corps to War Rose. Following this, the day of Annie's attempted capture commences, with Armin hiding in the shadows, pulling Annie away from her group, asking her if there's somewhere that she can help Eren escape to. Armin, Mikasa and Eren then lure Annie away towards an underground passage, where other members of the survey corps hide, waiting to attack. Annie, however, begins to catch on about the situation. Armin confronts her about Marco's ODM gear, which she handed in, quickly connecting her to his death. Annie is apprehended, however, she transforms into the female titan. Eren also transforms, and the two engage in a fight that brings destruction across the entire district. Annie attempts to escape after losing to Eren, but she fails and instead uses the titan hardening ability to crystallize herself to avoid getting captured and thus leaking information about her, Reiner, and Bertolt's mission. In the aftermath of the battle, a titan is revealed to be residing in Wall Sheena. Just when everyone thinks everything's yours, all under control, Zeke Jaeger invades Wall Rose. He uses his beast titan powers to turn the villagers of Connie's hometown, Rogoko, into titans under his control. A team under Mike's command heads out to investigate where the hole in the wall is allowing the titans through, unaware that the titans spawned from Zeke's power. Mike orders the Survey Corps member Thomas to tell the people of Wall Rose of the titan sightings. Mike encounters the beast titan and Zeke takes 
takes his ODM gear and is impressed by the invention, and then cripples him before ordering the other titans nearby to kill him. Sasha visits her old village, saving a young girl named Kaya, who is abandoned by the rest of the village because of her mother's bad legs. She has no choice but to watch as a titan eats her mother. Sasha though takes Kaya and tells her to run away, while she stays behind and blinds the titan. The two are later saved by Sasha's family where Kaya is then adopted into them. The survey corps rest up at Utgard castle after realising that there is no hole in the wall. The survey corps teams headed by Galga and Nanaba are assaulted by titans that can move at night, forcing the survey corps veterans and recruits to fight for their lives all night. Thomas delivers the news to Erwin regarding the titan side fighting inside War Rose. The Stohess Survey Corps arrives in the Emric district en route to Utgard Castle. Meanwhile, Minister Nick exposes the significance of Historia Race in uncovering the secret of the walls. The Survey Corps also learns that Reynar and Bertolt could be working with Annie Leonhardt after performing a background check on the three of them and realising that they all came from the same place. A few hours later though, whilst the team at Utgard Castle continue fighting for their lives, they gain the upper hand, killing most of the larger titans. But then, Zeke's Beast Titan begins summoning more titans to their location and throwing debris at them, all part of his strategy. Zeke then climbs down the other side of the wall back into Wall Maria. During the chaos, the veteran members of the squad are killed, leaving Ymir no choice but to reveal herself as the Jaw Titan, reminding Historia of the secret that they made. As the Jaw Titan, she fights off the horde of Titans to try and save everyone. As she eventually gets swarmed by Titans and eaten alive, she is saved by the Stohess operatives that arrive on the scene, killing the remaining Titans. They regroup at top of the wall with Hannes' squad, and Krista then reveals herself as Historia Race. They recover Ymir's body, who is still alive. The Survey Corps then reveals to Hannes and everyone there that there is no breach in the wall. Reynar Braun and Bertolt Hoover pull Eren to one side and explain their Titan identities and their missions as the Armoured and Colossal Titans respectively. This results in a battle between Reynar and Eren in their Titan forms whilst Bertolt captures Ymir. Reynar is victorious in his battle and together they flee into a titan forest with Eren and Ymir. Five hours pass and Erwin regroups with them. They set off on a mission to save Eren and Ymir and eventually catch up to them and subsequently rescue Eren. During the battle though, Dina Fritz's titan shows up yet again. The same one that ate Eren's mother. Hannes tries to kill it, taking revenge for Eren's mother, but he too is killed by this smiling titan. Historia tries reasoning with Ymir as she chooses to go with Reynar and Bertolt after realising that she ate their friend and thus she feels she owes it to them. Erwin loses an arm and everyone seems to be in a disastrous situation. Just as Dina Fritz's titan reaches for Eren, he punches her, with them resulting in physical contact. Because Eren had the founding titan laying dormant within him, as well as Dina Dina's titan being of royal blood, them touching gave Eren the power to control the titans. And so, he orders a nearby titan to kill Dina Fritz's and other titans to attack Reynar and Bertolt. However, they, together with the Ymir, eventually escape. But the mission to retrieve Eren was a success. Following the battle, only 40 or so survive, and Erwin begins to lose consciousness due to the loss of his right arm. At the Shigantina district, Reynar, Bertolt and Ymir take a break, which is when Ymir reveals her reason for going with them, was so that she could return the jaw titan that she once stole from them. After that, Ymir is sent to Mali, leaving a letter for Historia. Reynar tells Ymir that Historia will be saved from the future Paradise Island battles. Because of the attack, however, refugees from War Rose are sent to underground shelters within War Sheena until it is confirmed whether or not War Rose is titan safe. A new special operations squad is assembled to safeguard Eren and Historia, made up of several members from the 104th Training Corps. Historia then reveals to everyone her lonely upbringing. Hanji takes Connie back to his hometown village to try and uncover some of the secrets regarding the recent attack. Using the information at hand, they put the pieces together to come up with the theory that the villagers are the ones who turned into the Titans. In the meantime, Hanji relocates Pastor Nick to the Trost District, whilst the refugees from War Rose are 
just sent back home after it was declared safe. However, the truth of the matter being that it was to stop impending anarchy breaking out inside Warshina due to the lack of supplies to go around. Days later, Erwin wakes up from the coma he got from losing his arm and is informed about everything that has happened since. The following day, the first interior squad kills Pastor Nick after capturing him. Upon learning of his death, Hanji begins to suspect a plot against the Survey Corps. They later alert Squad Levi about her suspicions, but they decide to keep with their plans whilst facing any opposition. Meanwhile, Erwin is summoned to the Mitra's Chancellery to speak with the Assembly. It's here he begins to question the truth behind what it is the royal government is truly trying to protect and comes to the conclusion that it is nothing more than themselves. The following day, experiments on Eren's titan form continue. He discovers that he's only able to transform up to three times in a row before running out of stamina, and that the third titan was barely 10 meters tall and unable to support itself. After waking up from a titan-induced sleep, Eren begins getting memory fragments of Frida Reese, Historia's older half-sister. Levi discovers that Dima Reeves, a merchant that led the Reeves company is in league with the first interior squad, a subdivision of the military police shrouded in mystery. After some negotiation, Reeves agrees to aid the Survey Corps' cause. Levi then successfully captures a member of the first interior squad called Jigel Sanez. He reveals to Levi and Hange after intense methods of torture that the Reeves family are the true royal family. The two then send Nefer to bring news of this to Erwin immediately. Back in the Trust District, however, Erwin and Commander Pixis agree to overthrow the royal family. He explains to Pixis his father's theory and that he lives to try and prove it, regarding humans becoming titans, titans making the walls, and how 107 years ago, the people who fled within the walls had their memories altered so that they could be ruled with ease. After Erwin receives news about the Reese family from Nefer, he organises a plan to locate Rod Reese so that Historia may be crowned as the true queen of humanity. The next day, Levi forcibly makes Historia accept her mantle of the queen. As squad Levi receives Erwin's orders to overthrow the monarchy, a plot is put together by Demon Reeves to keep Eren and Historia hostage so that they can be taken in by the first interior squad in order for them to locate Rod Reese. Kenny Ackerman arrives to take the two of them away, but then kills Demo to stop him being trailed. Subsequently, the Survey Corps are framed for his death, and so Erwin is taken into military police custody, naming Hanja to be his successor. Squad Levi shadows the first interior squad as they transport Eren and Historia, but are in turn ambushed by Kenny's team, leading to a fierce battle in the Stohes district. Meanwhile, Hanja convinces Roy, a journalist of the Berg newspaper, to report the truth about the first interior squad and the framing of the survey corps to the public. The next day, the truth regarding Demo's death is then revealed to the public. Erwin is brought forth King Fritz and the Assembly, while Whilst his, public ex whilst his public execution is being prepared. They plan to disband the entire Survey Corps, but Anka enters with the news that the Colossal Titan and Armoured Titan have breached through wall rows yet again. With everybody panicking, the nobles order that the gates to Warshina be sealed off so that no refugees may enter. After it is revealed that this was just a hoax to draw out the royal family's true intentions, Commander Zackley arrests the nobles, thus dethroning King Fritz in the process. Meanwhile, Hitch and Marlow switch allegiances from the military police to join the Survey Corps cause. Squad Levi then attacks the headquarters of the 1st Interior Squad, crippling their forces, but Eren and Historia are nowhere to be found. The squad, however, learn the news regarding the success of overthrowing the royal family, and also receive a lead regarding Eren and Historia's whereabouts, having learned about the history of the Reese Chapel. Rod Reese, Historia's father, manipulates her and gets Historia and himself to place their hands on Eren's back, triggering memories of Grisha's final moments. This also triggers Historia to recall the memories of her older half-sister which she had erased. Rod explains what Grisha did to Frida in front of both Eren and Historia. Meanwhile, Commander Zackley tortures the nobles and learns that they are immune to the founding titan's power. Levi's squad then arrives at the chapel and engages with Kenny's squad. Rod tries to get Historia to inject herself with the titan fluid and eat Eren, but she refuses 
refuses after remembering Ymir's words about living a life that she is proud of, and thus she smashes the needle containing the Titan fluid. Historia then rushes to free Eren from his shackles whilst her father licks the fluid off the floor, turning into a huge, pure Titan twice the size of the Colossal Titan. Eren ingests an armor serum from Rod's bag and creates a Titan with the hardening ability for the first time, which he uses to protect his teammates from the collapsing cavern. They regroup with Erwin, who devises a plan to lure Rodrice's giant titan towards the Orva district, using the vast amount of civilians as a lure. Rodrice's giant titan is finally killed before it can infiltrate the Orva district, thanks to the combined efforts of the garrison unit, Arison's attack titan, and squad Levi, with Historia being the one to kill it. Kenny is later found by Levi, who reveals his relation to Levi whilst on his deathbed. He hands him a titan serum he stole from Rod's bag in his final moments as he passes away. Okay, so a day after Kenny's death, Historia is crowned as Queen of Paradise and acknowledged as royal blood as the truth starts to spread. One of the first orders Historia executes was bringing many orphans from the underground to the surface world for adoption. The nobles from the assembly are then imprisoned as the members of the military take their place. The Survey Corp start to create new technology to assist them in titan killing such as the Thunder Spears. The Thunder Spears are based on research records that had been preserved in secret from some of the inside people of the military police brigade. Despite their orders to wipe out any sign of technological innovation, this technology was adopted to design a new special weapon for use against the armored titan. A single Thunder Spear is powerful enough to sever the female titan's arm. The second piece of technology technology they made was the Executioner from Hell, a large device intended for the purpose of killing titans without the need for soldiers fighting them or the use of cannons and other resources. Eren's new hardening ability was used to create it where Trost District's outer gate once stood, which then begins to clear titans out of Valmaria. Things are looking up for the characters and this short piece helps create public support. Even glowing stone was being used from the Reese Chapel Cave as sort Sources of light to help increase the productivity of everyone, meaning that at night time scouting missions were now possible and they could create a route to Shiganshina district. The Survey Corps' increased popularity causes many young soldiers to enlist or reassign to their division to help because you know no one wanted to be part of the Survey Corps. A council of military leaders believed that Levi should be entrusted with Kenny's Titan Serum and Erwin Smith felt like it was time to lead over 100 soldiers soldiers on an expedition to Shiganshina in order to pluck the whole of Valmaria so that everything can be more fortified. However, Zeke also arrives, meeting Reiner and Berthold. As their commander, he makes a plan to wait for the Survey Corps to arrive in order to complete their mission of retrieving the founding titan, Eren. At this point of time in chapter 71, Squad Levi visits Keith Shadis to learn of his involvement with Grisha Jaeger in the year 832, which we explained earlier in the video. Moving on, Eren uses his hardening ability to seal the bridge and outer gate. Before the inner gate can be sealed, Zeke as the Beast Titan traps everyone in the Survey Corps. This is when the Battle of Shiganshina District is fought between the Survey Corps and the Warriors of Marley. Urban reveals that he still has a plan to win but does not want to apply it because he will die as a result. And he does not want to die without seeing what is in the basement, revealing that the reason he was able to make it that far was because he was waiting for the day he would get answers to his questions, the questions that led to his father's death. However, on Levi's advice, Erwin drops his dream and puts his plan in motion, dying along with most of the recruits. Eren and Reiner battle in their titan forms in Shiganshina. As Eren and Reiner battle in their titan forms in Shiganshina, during the battle, the Survey Corps attacks Reiner with Thunder Spears, blowing Reiner's head right off. Bertolt transforms into the Colossal Titan above Shiganshina, killing most of Hanjay's squad in an explosive energy of transformation. The Beast Titan then starts bombarding the Survey Corps in the north with a barrage of stones and boulders. Erwin then finally leads his last ditch 
Ditch Frontal Charge into the line of fire as a distraction which results in the complete annihilation of the Survey Corps cavalry, only leaving Flock out of the 100 men alive. The Flock being the only survival of this assault plays a major role in the final events of Attack on Titan as an antagonist mainly stemming from this event that became a cornerstone for his character. His friends dying, a mindless dream from a psycho commander and endless suffering thanks to the higher ups makes him realize that he should side with Eren and the Jaegerist in the future. The only person Zeke was scared of in the whole survey court was of course Levi and he successfully ambushes and uses Eren's distraction to defeat the beast titan, cutting Zeke out of his transformation but before Levi can kill him, Zeke is rescued by Peak in her cart titan form. Hanje and squad Levi attack the regenerated armored titan. They defeat Reiner with thunder spears with Mikasa landing the finishing blow which blows Reiner right out of his mate. Armin then uses himself as a sacrifice and a diversion attack against the colossal titan who then is defeated by Eren after he leaves his titan form cutting Bertolt out of his mate. Reiner tells Hanji to pass a letter from Ymir to Historia. Shortly before Zeke and Peek arrive to rescue him, the three flee Shiganshina district leaving Bertolt behind to die. Both Armin and Erwin are found to be alive but on the brink of death, creating a difficult choice as to who should be saved with the titan serum held by Levi. Ultimately, it is decided by Levi that Armin should be given the serum. Armin, in his new titan form, eats Bertolt, gaining the colossal titan and Erwin dies. After Erwin's death, Hanji is then chosen to become the commander of the scouts, so after getting more rest, they all investigate the basement of the Jaeger household where they discover three books left by Grisha detailing his past at Marley and his knowledge of the Eldian Marleyan conflict. A picture of Grisha with an unknown woman and a child also appears in one of those books. The Survey Corps is surprised to see that the picture appears to be too elaborate to be a portrait drawn by human hands. But Eren reads a message written on the back by Grisha stating that this is a photograph, a technology unknown within the walls and that Grisha came from a civilization beyond the walls where humanity enjoys a refined existence, revealing that humanity has not perished as the royal government had led the people to believe. Believe. They learn everything about the outside world and confirm their beliefs regarding the history they were made ignorant of. After learning the truth, the military forces decide the public need to know this information so they publish a story in the newspaper for everyone to read. Eren and Mikasa are imprisoned for assaulting their superior Levi when they were choosing who should get a serum, Armin or Orwin. Whilst imprisoned, Eren starts to see his father's memories through the pads and he realizes that the titan that killed his mother was his father's first wife, Dina. Eventually, Eren and Mikasa are released from the prison and a meeting is held to discuss the findings from from the basement. Eren realizes a loophole in the first king's will involving touching a royal blooded titan as he did with Dina, but chooses not to speak of it out of concern for Historia's fate, as he would be used as a scapegoat to meet the goals of others. The survivors of the Battle of Shiganshina then go to meet Queen Historia, where Eren kisses Historia's hand, but in that moment he entered the realm of the pads, receiving countless memories from the past holders and his father. This meant Eren also saw the future of the rumbling and every single piece that unfolds to make that happen as the Eren of the future in the year 854 is the one that is making his father do certain tasks and complete certain memories. He receives all the memories to enact the plan of the rumbling as his future self believes this is the only way to save humanity and Eldia against the world that sees them as devils and nothing more. Eren of the future wants to stop the oppression of his people give his friends long lasting happy lives, get revenge for his mother and also destroy all the titans on earth. Well that's at least what we thought until chapter 139 in the final episodes where he states that he didn't know what he was doing and he doesn't know why he did anything at all and we all know the memes that came out of it birds but we will save that for a later video although if you guys are interested what i'm referring to then check 
check out the video Adil and Hunter made about a year ago exploring all the greatness of the Attack on Titan ending. <laughs> Anyways, coming back to what the rumbling is, it is a cataclysmic event involving Carl Fritz's wall titans marching across the earth destroying all life upon it. So essentially, Eren touching Historia opened a glimpse into his future memories where he saw himself influencing the decision of his father Grisha in stealing the power of the founding titan and slaughtering the Reese family. At this time, Eren saw the sight of the rumbling that he would cause in the future and his inevitable defeat after annihilating 80% of all human life. We then move back to Marley where Reiner, Zeke, and the others return. The government postpones their mission to obtain the founding titan and when the loss of two titans becomes publicly known, which were of course the colossal and the female titan, the Middle East allied forces declare war on Marley due to their lack of power from before. The Middle East allied forces is a unified army that originates from several allied nations. They are enemies of Marley who were at war with their nations for four years after the warriors' failure to capture the founding titan. Near the end of the winter months, it is announced that while Maria has been made completely titan free, very few titans remain beyond the walls on Paradise Island. Also somewhere around the end of year 850, Ymir is restrained and eaten by Porco, the brother of Marcel whom died earlier in the story to save Reiner. Porco inherits all of Ymir's memories after this. In addition, Zeke Jaeger meets with Kiyomi Azumabito in private, revealing his true allegiance to Eldia, and they both discuss plan for the revival of the Eldian Empire. Moving on to 851, a year after the Battle of Trost, people start moving into Shiganshina district. The Survey Corps had started to venture outside Walmaria after six long years, reaching the border of the island for the first time and witnessing the ocean for the first time also. A bit after this time, Marley sends out a survey fleet to Paradise Island just to check out things are progressing on the island after the return of the warriors back to Marley. However, they're intercepted by the Survey Corps on the beach and detain the Marleyan soldiers on board. It also turns out that among the Marleyan military, there were anti marleyan volunteers on board who defect to the side of the Eldians inside the walls. Yelena then reveals herself as the leader of the anti marley group and alongside Anya Capone starts giving critical information to the people of Paradise Island about the rest of the world and the technologies that they possess. It also turns out that it was Zeke who the defectors answer to. Zeke has sent Yelena to contact Eren regarding his plans for how to revitalize the Eldian people. After learning of Zeke's plan from Yelena, Eren agrees to follow Zeke. However, when questioned further by Flock about his true intentions, he tells Flock to just play along and only pretend to be by their side. Eren reveals to Flock that he plans to use the power of the founding titan to kill everyone outside of Paradise and bring order to the world. Flock, being of the same mindset, gets to work creating a faction known as the Jaegerists who follow Eren's will to destroy destroy everyone and everything that's not Paradise. Next year, in 952, Kiyomi of the Azumabito clan from Hizuru visited Paradise in order to reform the century-old alliance. She also reveals that Mikasa is a long-lost descendant of the clan's shogunate, making her royalty through a mark on her hand. Kiyomi also explains that there are three conditions needed to protect Paradise from outside invasion. Eren instantly opposes one of the conditions which would mean getting Historia pregnant and having her children become sacrifices of royal titan holders for the safety of Paradise. Eren warns Historia that the military police want to immediately feed Zeke to her as soon as he arrives in Paradise. Historia refuses to stand up to the military police and claims that she is prepared to martyr herself for Paradise, if that is what it takes to defeat the enemy. Eren then explains to her his intention to completely destroy the outer world, but Historia objects saying that individuals outside Paradise do not have anything to do with Marley or the enemy. She is horrified by Eren's plans. However, Eren believes that the only way to cease the aggression against Paradise is to wipe out everybody who is not firmly affiliated with them. Historia also declines Eren's offer to wipe her memory with the Founding Titan if she cannot bear the shame of having been privy to his scheme. Next, in the year 853, the Survey Corps begin infiltrating Marley's country under the pretense of tourists from neighboring countries. Eren 
Aaron is one of the Survey Corps men that joined this journey to meet with Kiyomi, but although the others are ecstatic to be outside the walls, Aaron remains stoic, only remarking on items he recalls from his father's memories. Aaron then reveals a new side of himself, agonized over the fact that as part of his plot to destroy the world, he would soon be responsible for killing everyone. Aaron is then alone in the streets of Marley pondering his next steps when he rescues a young boy named Ramsey and returns him to his camp. Aaron breaks down and sobs that he was powerless to alter the course of events. He apologizes to Ramsey in tears. After this event, he abandons everyone and enlists as a soldier in Marley's military. One day, the troops are present at a hearing between politicians to investigate Eldia's mistreatment. Aaron, however, discreetly exits the assembly when the speaker begins advocating for the hatred aimed against Eldians to be focused on the Eldians residing on Paradise. Meanwhile, on the Marleyan side during the years of 950 to 953, their war with the Middle East Allied forces raged on. In these three years, 32 scouting ships were sent by Marley to Paradise, but none of the ships returned. Furthermore, the battle for Fort Slava, a seaside fortification, is the culmination of Marley's conflict with the Mideast Allied forces. While the warriors under Marleyan leadership are laying siege to the fort, Zeke utilizes the Beast Titan's abilities to drop parachuting Eldians over Fort Lava, transforming them into Titans as an airstrike on the fortress. Reiner's armor Titan destroys the majority of the anti-Titan artillery stationed at Fort Slava, while the Beast Titan fires artillery rounds into the adjacent Mideast fleet, causing it to be completely destroyed. The outcome of this fight puts the Marley Mideast War to a close. However, before the end of the war, Aaron cuts off his own leg and gouges out one of his eyes to infiltrate the Marleyan military as an injured Eldian soldier. A few days later, the Mideast Allied forces sign a peace treaty with Marley, the victors of the Four Years' War. A meeting is then convened afterward to discuss the global reaction to the end of the war and also the defeat of Marleyan warriors in Paradis. Despite their victory, Marley's position as the dominant nation of the world was greatly threatened with the new existence of anti-Titan artillery. Realizing the age of the dominance of Titans over the world, it became clear to Marley that the acquisition of the founding Titan was a necessity now. The matter was discussed among the leaders of the military shortly afterward, where it was concluded by Commander Magath that Marley's reliance on the power of the Titans has left them at a significant technological disadvantage. whereas other other nations of the world have progressed rapidly through efforts to overcome the Titan. Zeke then proposes to resume the Paradise Island operation so that Marley could gain complete mastery over the Titans while simultaneously developing conventional weapons to maintain their global political hold. A week later, the Tiber family gives their assistance to the Paradise Island effort, promising to deal with Paradise within a year in order to restore Eldia's reputation in the eyes of the observing world. Because remember, the Eldians in Marley have been been fed propaganda. Eren, unbeknownst to everyone, is also in Liberio, posing as Eren Kruger to avoid suspicion. He then meets and becomes friends with Falco, one of the war survivor warrior candidates. Falco then starts delivering letters to his comrades, who are now adult Survey Corps members. Willie Tiber then meets with Magath, and together they conspire to rid Marley of its troublesome military elite to pave the way for Magath's rise into power. So the preparation for the festival starts in the Eldir internment camp, where Willie Tiber announces his stage performance about his answer to the Titan problem from Paradise. Falco, during the festival, takes Reinhardt to meet with Eren, thinking they are both buddies from from the past, to which he isn't wrong, you know. As they make their way to, into the basement of the stage, Willie Tiber on the other side publicly unveils the truth about the Great Titan War, naming Eren Jaeger as the founding Titan who is the biggest threat to world peace. Meanwhile, Eren is just beneath the stage finally having his one-on-one -on -one confrontation with Reiner and gives a speech about how they are both the same. But just as Willie declares war on Paradise, Eren transforms his attack Titan bursting out of the floor, devouring 
Young Willie thinking he was the Warhammer Titan. However, it was actually Lara Tiber who had inherited the Warhammer Titan. She transforms into her Titan form and starts attacking Eren. And as the battle ensues, Eren starts to get overpowered by the versatility of the Warhammer as it is being remotely controlled from a distance. But like always, Mikasa is there to save the day and uses a barrage of thunder spears to bring the Titan down, giving Eren enough time to identify the true body of the Warhammer below ground. However, as he tries to break the crystal encasing her, he cannot break it. It's as hard as the crystal Annie, the female Titan, formed around her after her loss at the hands of Eren. The rest of the Survey Corps also jump into action equipped with anti-personnel 3D maneuvering gear to not only go against Titans but people also. The Jaw, Cart, Beast Titans also join the battle, to which the Survey members have a bit of difficulty against, but they soon gain the upper hand and after Armin uses his colossal Titan to destroy the entire docking fleet, they gain the upper hand. Levi also gets a crack at the Beast Titan, while the Cart Titan is neutralized by an attack by John of all people. Additionally, the Jaw Titan fights aggressively against Eren, but is eventually defeated and used as a nutcracker to bust open the Warhammer's crystal in order to be eaten by Eren. Eren is also about to eat the Jaw Titan's user Gilliard, but this time Reiner has finally got the courage to transform into the Armored Titan and not commit suicide for the guilt he possesses. Eren and Reiner have a standoff, but since Eren was already worn out from his fight against the Warhammer, he decides to retreat to the airship alongside the rest of the Survey Corps. Falco and his friend Gabby also sneak into the airship where Gabby ends up shooting and killing Sasha. Zeke is also transported onto the ship after he loses to Levi. After the airship reaches Paradise, a funeral is held for the eight soldiers including Sasha who died during the raid in Liberio. The rest of the world forms a global alliance army to prepare a retaliation attack against Paradise for a scorched earth operation in six months time. Eren is then placed in an underground prison due to his insubordination and the attack on Marley. Zeke alongside all the anti-Marleyan volunteers are placed under house arrest by Paradise. Levi personally is a security guard for Zeke so no funny business can start happening. However, Falco and Gabby end up escaping the custody of the Paradise military and run into the wilderness where they meet Sasha's family. At this time, Historia is also revealed to be pregnant for several months with the father being a farmer from her orphanage days. Flock, in the meantime, is busy recruiting loyal subordinates who agree with Eren's plan of total destruction of the entire world except for Paradise. They start protesting against the imprisonment of the hero Eren, leading to unrest throughout the walls. The loyalists, now named the Jaegerists, assassinate then-chancellor Zackley with a bomb because he was about to have Eren be eaten. Eren also uses his newfound Warhammer Titan powers to escape his cell and meets up with the Aegorists to put on his drip. While the military is busy searching for Eren, Peek successfully infiltrates the walls. Pixis announces that they plan to negotiate with the Jaegerists due to great public support, forgetting about Zaxi's assassination. Additionally, Gabby and Falco are starting to see that the people of Paradise are just like any other people. They aren't the devil or demons of the earth like the Marleyan propaganda stated. They just want to survive and lead fulfilling lives just like everyone else. This is further developed when the Blouse family alongside Falco and Gabby are treated by Nicholas to a fancy dinner. The Survey Corps arrived at the same restaurant to question Niccolo, and as Falco gets a wine bottle smashed in his head, Gabby and Niccolo start to argue where Gabby is made to confront her action of killing Sasha but eventually is forgiven by her father as he doesn't want to further the cycle of hatred. However, just as Niccolo reveals that the Marleyan wine has Zeke's spinal fluid, which all the elites have been consuming inside the walls, panic ensues. The Jaegerists rush into the restaurant taking the Survey Corps soldiers captive and it turns out that they have rejected Pix's offer to negotiate and demand Hanjay to let them see Zeke. Around the same time, Eren meets up with Mikasa and Armin where their discussion becomes heated resulting in both being taken captive by the Jaegerists according to Eren's orders. Moving to Zeke who's being washed over by Levi and the Survey Corps makes an attempt to escape. Zeke attempts to escape from Levi by transforming while the Survey Corps guarding him turn into Titans since they had all consumed the Marley and wine with Zeke's spinal fluid. However, Levi defeats Zeke after killing all the Titans and captures him again. As Levi arrives 
slides back to the wall, Zeke detonates a thunder spear, catching both Levi and himself in the resulting blast. Before Zeke can succumb to his wounds, he is saved when a pure titan stuffs him inside of its stomach, allowing Ymir Fritz to rebuild his body in the Pat's dimension. Flock and the Jaegerists force Hanji to take them to Zeke by recruiting more followers and end up badly beating Shadis in Shiganshina. On their way, they stumble upon Zeke emerging from a titan carcass while Hanji takes the chance and jumps into the river with Levi's body. The Jaegerists label everyone who consumed Zeke's spinal fluid with red armbands and Yelena visits the Survey Corps soldiers in their cell and explains Zeke's euthanasia plan. Peek, who is posing as a Survey Corps soldier, ambushes Eren while he is attempting to interrogate Gabby. Peek tries convincing Eren into believing she has defected to Eldia and promises to reveal the location of the Marleyan infiltrators as proof. Peek and Gabby are taken to the roof to point out the location of said Marleyan infiltrators when Porco in his jaw titan form attacks Eren as part of a Marleyan surprise attack. Eren narrowly avoids getting eaten before transforming. Okay guys, so at this point, Marley's revenge for Liberio and the raid on Paradise begins. With their airships, the Marleyan soldiers fly over Shiganshina district whilst dropping off the paratroopers. Rhyna and Porco use the armored and jaw titans respectively to engage with Eren in combat, whilst Peek transports Gabby out of danger and then in her cart titan form assists the Marleyan's attack. Anya Kapoon frees the prisoners kept in Paradise in the expectation that they would aid in the protection of Eren from the invading force. Whilst the battle commences, Zeke in his beast titan form arrives on top of the wall of Shigan Shina and starts his own counter attack by flinging boulders onto Marleyan airships destroying all of them. Alone, he is able to put the other titans at bay. However, Zeke is finally brought down by Theo Magath, the general of the Marleyan soldiers who is operating an anti-titan artillery mounted on the cart titan's back. Though his beast titan Snape was destroyed, Zeke survives, giving him the opportunity to use his power to transform the Aldians who drank his spinal fluid into pure titans with just a scream, to then summon them into battle. However, just before he does so, Colt and Falco approaches him, informing Zeke that Falco has ingested his fluid too. They plead for Zeke not to scream, but their request is ignored as Zeke apologizes and then lets out a roar, triggering all the soldiers who had drunk from his special fluid wine to turn into titans, which sadly includes Falco. Colt, in his final efforts to give support to his brother, he hugs Falco as he becomes a titan, instantly dying from the explosive transformation. Falco now as a pure titan is then commanded by Zeke to go and devour Reiner who is fighting Eren. Porco who is already critically injured returns to his human form and allows Falco's pure titan to eat him instead, therefore sparing Reiner along with helping Falco to regain himself in the process by giving him the power of the jaw titan. Eren takes this opportunity and breaks free from his titan form, hurrying towards Zeke so they can touch hands and finally activate the power of the founding titan. However, right before he can do this, Gabby pulls out an anti-titan rifle and does a quick scope through Eren's neck, literally blowing his head right off his body. Zeke laying down in shock manages to catch Eren's head just before his brain shuts off. This moment of them touching activates the power of the founding titan and sends both their consciousness into the world of the paths. With both of them now in the path realm, Zeke explains how everything works, from the world to the founder Ymir Fritz who lives on here in boundless time. Ymir controls everything from forming the titans to being able to manipulate every one of her descendants. However, her true form is that of a slave without any will of her own. Zeke states that she submits to any with royal blood, believing them to be her master. Though, due to the promise of his ancestor, Karl Fritz, Zeke is initially seen chained up in this realm, so he tells Eren to make the command to Ymir in euthanizing the Eldians. Eren at this point then reveals to Zeke that he never intended to follow his euthanasia plan and instead begins to request Ymir to lend him the full power of the founding titan. However, Ymir ignores him and submits herself to the chained up Zeke, who then reveals his own Una reverse. Zeke, whilst waiting for Eren to wake up, spent an eternity in the path realm. This gave him the knowledge on how to break free from his chains. Unlike the previous kings, he was not brainwashed by the first king's ideology. And because Ymir is a slave, all to the direct blood, Zeke is the one who has complete control. Eren was just the key. Zeke tells
tells Eren he is brainwashed by their father and that he will once again try to attempt to convince him of his euthanization plan. So Zeke chains him up in this realm and shows him the memories of their father Grisha through Eren's attack titan. They see everything from Grisha's childhood to his upbringing in Mali to his time in Paradise, both learning something new about their father. During this journey, Eren sees his father affected by their memory trip as Grisha, due to his attack titan power, is able to glimpse Zeke who is just supposed to be a spectator. This left Zeke surprised but they moved on to the next memory. However, Zeke's plan to make Eren realize his father's brainwashing backfires. He realized that Grisha raised Eren much differently to how he raised himself. We then finally get to Grisha confronting Vida Reese who was once the founding titan during the attack on Shigon Shina. This showed us the moment of how Eren influenced the past by pushing his father to kill the Reese family. As Zeke was slowly comprehending the extent of the attack titan ability, he was left speechless. Upon killing the majority of the Reese family, Grisha is once again able to glimpse Zeke but this time around he's able to interact with him, likely due to acquiring the founding titan building a link. He reveals that throughout time, Eren has been showing him glimpse of the future. From the moment he received the attack titan, Eren has been guiding Grisha in every step and action just like he was with Eren Kruger and possibly all the other past attack titan users. Grisha then tearfully embraces his son Zeke whilst begging him to stop his brother Eren. The past and the future was all set in stone the moment Eren touched his story's hands four years ago as Eren saw his father's memories effectively seeing the actions of his future self. Zeke shocked by what he learned breaks free from Grisha's memory. In order to stop Eren he commands Ymir to take away Eldia's ability to reproduce. However before she completes his request Eren breaks free from his chains and rushes to catch up with her. As he makes contact he sees her memories along with the torturous life she was forced to live. Working as a slave even after death serving the royal family for all eternity. As Eren embraces Ymir he requests her strength in destroying the entire world beyond Paradise while expressing sympathy towards her. He reminds her that she's not a slave nor is she god. She is just a human and does not need to serve anyone. She can now make the choice of what comes next. Ymir breaks out in tears as Eren questions if Ymir in her desperate pleas for help to be free was the one who set everything in motion. Without being given an answer, Ymir gives Eren the full strength of the founding titan. Back in real time, as Eren's decapitated head lands on Zeke's hands, the hallucinogenia creature that granted Ymir her titan powers emerges from Eren's spine and connects to his head which then transforms Eren into the final form of the founding titan. Being a massive skeleton figure larger than any titan before, Eren now towering over the city begins a full scale rumbling. All the walls of the island starts to crumble as the wall titans emerges and the rumbling is set into motion. Alongside the numerous colossal wall titans, Eren in his founding titan form begins to move towards Mali and the outside world. Around this point, Zeke is also eaten by a titan. Armin and Mikasa witnessing this outcome realizes that Eren is planning to go on a full scale genocide. This suspicion is confirmed as Eren using his new founding titan ability and access to the paths, he telepathically speaks to all Aldeans across the world and explains that he will destroy the entire world for Aldeans safety. This subsequently causes a mass panic around the world as the Aldeans outside of Paradise know they will be collateral damage of the rumbling. The Aldeans in Mali rush to the gate gods to warn them of the approaching danger. However, the gods don't believe them and instead round them all up. But they are quickly overwhelmed by Mr. Leonhardt and a gang of rebel Eldians. Now whilst all of this is happening, Hunj is in the woods caring for a wounded Levi when they both learn of Eren's plan to destroy the world. At the same time, due to Eren's command of hardening to be undone for the wall titans to be free, all the other types of hardenings are affected. So Annie is finally set free from her crystals whilst Reiner is put out of commission as his armor is stripped away. Up on a building, Jean, Armin, Mikasa and Connie discuss the current situation with the unconscious Falco in their possession who now has the power of the jaw titan. Though this discussion doesn't last long as Zeke's titan who with no leader now are out of control and attack the squad. Connie takes this opportunity to escape with Falco in hopes of feeding him to his mother. Gabi who's out on the look for Falco stumbles across Kaya who's being attacked by a titan and saves her. The two then apologizes to each other for the past mistakes. Zeke's out of control pure titans are then soon dealt with along 
along with the anti-Malian volunteers being restrained by the Jaegerist. Unfortunately, due to this process, Pixis and even Rug, along with countless other infected soldiers, are killed in the process. Meanwhile, with the help of Hitch, Annie manages to escape. Annie then tells her story as a child with her dad. Sometime later, Gabby finds Armin, and together they set off to stop Connie from feeding Falco to his mother. We move to Pirk and General Magath. They watch the Malian airship retreat right before Hunch and Nevi approach to meet them. The two opposing sides then agree to team up for the greater good and stop the rumbling. Later that night, as Jean dwells on if he should really just settle down and live the good life, Hunch bangs on the window to talk to him. He ultimately goes with her and Mikasa and they decide to join up with the new alliance. The first day of the rumbling ends, everyone gets some sleep. We then come to the second day of the rumbling. Honey arrives to his village with Falco, where the boy starts questioning his sussy behaviour. Connie evades through his suspicion and convinces Falco to brush his mum teeth with him. At the same time, Gabby and Armin arrive to stop him, in which Connie holds Falco hostage. Armin utterly decides to sacrifice his life to save Connie's mother. Connie snaps out of his craze and saves Armin in time before he jumps into his mother's mouth. They talk for a bit and decide to stop the rumbling together. But most importantly, Gabby and Falco are finally reunited. We move to Mikasa who finds a dying Louise and takes her scarf back. But not before hearing that Eren wanted to throw it away. Later that day, Flock and the Jaegerists celebrate in trust before heading to Shigan China as the rumbling heads out for the mainland. Armin, Connie, Gabby and Falco reach trust and find Annie who decides to go with them to stop the rumbling. In Shigan China, Flock and Jean stand to execute Onyan Kapoon and Yelena with the crowd of cheering Jaegerists. As Onyan Kapoon pleads for his life, Jean shoots the ground four times, giving the signal to be rescued by Pierre, who in her car titan form grabs them all in her mouth. Below, Mikasa, Annie, Armin, Connie, Falco and Gabby ride out to find and recruit Rhino. During which, Keith Sadis watches them from inside a building. The car titan brings Jean, Yelena and Onyan Kapoon to Magath, Hange and Levi, to which they wait for the others. The others who do find Reiner declares that they are going to save the world. Later that night, all the members of the Alliance gathers in the woods, forming a campfire. The two sides of the Alliance, Marley and Paradis, flesh out their thoughts and let out all their feelings. Magath and Jean get into an argument in which Hange stops the two. Annie uses the silence to ask her former friends if they can kill Eren. Because it takes offense and begins to attack Annie. Annie calms her down and she tells her that she doesn't want to kill Eren in fact, but she does want to save her father, who will be crushed if they don't stop Eren's rumbling. That night carries on and Hanj discusses a plan to use Kiyomi's flying boat to stop the rumbling. To get more information, General Magath questions the captured Yelena for answers, but she refuses to help him. The conversation between the others also escalates even further, where Jean gets frustrated to the point of beating the crap out of Reiner. Gabby then rushes to protect her cousin and gets accidentally kicked in the process. This however does stop Jean who then walks off for the rest of the night to cool down. The Alliance then finally gets some rest as the second day of the rumbling ends. We now move on to the third day of the rumbling. The group wakes up and heads outwards towards the Paradis port, where Pig in her cart titan comes back from scouting, relaying that the Jaegerists have captured the port along with Kiyomi and her engineers. They also find out that the Global Alliance fleet is destroyed by the rumbling as it finally reaches Mali and begins to trample everything. Noticing the speed of the rumbling, they begin their plan to attack by rescuing the Azamabitos from Flock and the Jaegerists, ultimately stealing the flying boat to then apprehend Eren in his founding titan form. They pretty much succeed though Flock escapes and informs everyone that Mikasa, Connie and Armin have betrayed Aldia. This prompts Samuel to shoot Armin and order Daz to set a detonator as he holds Connie at gunpoint. Samuel tears up and pleads with Connie about how they're going to take back their land and share meat. Inside the building, Mikasa and the mechanics rushes down the stairs as the Jaegerist begins to blow up the building. They are escorted to the basement by Hunch, Magath and Jean. Outside Side, Annie and Reiner transform and cause more chaos as Levi, Yelena, Pierre, and Anya Kapoon, along with the kids, watch from a distance. Connie wrestles with Samuel as Daz tries to reconnect the detonator. He's stopped by an injured Armin. Daz pleads Armin to stop as he will aim his gun at him and begins to tear off. At that moment, Armin thinks of Bertolt as Connie snatches the gun from a screaming and crying Samuel and shoots both of them in the head. Samuel and Daz are now dead. Meanwhile, Reiner and Annie use the Titans with Pierre 
Rick and Falco joining them as support, obviously with the NASA transforming into the jaw titan for the first time. Though Falco, likely due to ingesting Zeke's blood, has his jaw titan looking much like a beast. Regardless, in this new titan form, he is able to save everyone and kill a lot of Icarus in the process. However, Flock escapes the caught titan and almost destroys the ship that's carrying the flying boat, but is shot down in the shoulder by Gabby. The rest of the Jaegerists retreat as their reinforcements are suddenly derailed. The group then manages to secure the ship along with the flying boat. Magath stays behind to hold off against the Jaegerists and is saved by none other than Keith Shadis, who was able to travel there on his own whilst disabling the rail system to the port. The two were able to successfully delay the Jaegerists by blowing up the Jaegerist ship in the harbour, killing themselves and many of the enemy soldiers. So on the second day of the rumbling, Keith Shadis and General Magath dies. As the newly formed alliance, now with one less member, sails off, Flock manages to anchor himself to their ship, following their destination to Odaha. Whilst this is ongoing, across the sea, the global alliance, civilians and other nations retreat as the world titans along with Eren continues to destroy all the Mali and the rest of the world. Eren thinks back as Ramsey and Halil are squashed to death by the rumbling. Eren then uses the power of the founding titan to talk to all of his friends before erasing their memories. During the journey with now the memories wiped, Armin speaks to Annie confessing that he likes her. They discuss the situation and Eren's mental state. The alliance then finally reach an untouched Hezuru hangar in Mali, preparing the flying boat for their final mission. Yelena then succumbs revealing that Eren will head to Fort Salta with the goals of destroying the Malian airships. After some time, as everyone is getting suited up, Flock, having been holding out on the boat the whole time, reveals himself, shooting the flying boat's engine with the hopes of stopping the Alliance interference with Eren's rumbling. Flock ends up getting stabbed in the neck by Mikasa, all whilst the Wall Titans emerges from the mountains heading right for them. At this point, Flock in his final moments pleads to Hanj and Jean not to kill Eren. In haste, the mechanics and Anya Kapoon scramble to fix the boat as the Titans close in. As the group splits up, Hanj grabbing several thunder spears volunteers to stay behind and fight the quickly approaching wall Titans. Ultimately, Hanj sacrifices their life for everyone to escape on the flying boat, whilst the Azuma Butos, the kids, and Annie escape by the steamboat. Hanj dies in the third day of the rumbling, with Armin being promoted to the 15th Survey Corps Commander. Rhina and Peek went with the group going on the flying boat to apprehend Eren, but Annie stayed behind to guard Falco, Gabi and Kiyomi. Whilst they stayed on the Azama Bito ship bound towards Hiruzu, as the flying boat travels towards Fort Salta, Armin notes that due to obtaining the Warhammer Titan, Eren may not be residing within the nape of the founding Titan, and discusses with both the warriors and the Survey Corps members about various means to incapacitate the founding Titan. Suddenly, they are transported to the path and told by Eren that he will not stop the rumbling and that the only way they can stop him is to kill him. In all of this, he promises that he will not remove their free will, so they have the choice. Whatever they choose is up to them. Eren then releases them from the path realm, returning them back to the flying boat. With Eren's testament, the Survey Corps arm themselves with vertical maneuvering equipment and explosives to detonate at the base of the founding titan's head. We move back to the second group whilst leaving on the Azama Beta boat. Falco and Gabby plead with Annie that they can still help with the efforts to stop the rumbling. Due to ingesting part of Zeke's spinal fluid, Falco recalls memories of a former Beast Titan who was once capable of flying, and Falco is confident that he too can do the same. After agreeing and Kiyomi Yelena with the rest of the crew abandon the ship, Falco does indeed generate an evil form of the jaw titan and flies after the direction of the flying boat with both Annie and Gabby riding on top of his back. As now both groups heading towards Eren, the Malian military has received numerous reports of the walled titans quickly overrunning the continent. As survivors and refugees begin to reach Fort Salta, War Secretary Muller orders his bombermen to drop explosives on the quickly approaching titans. Unfortunately, the founding titan reveals this new power to summon dead titans from the past, one being Zeke's beast titan. And using the beast titan, Eden shoots down the airships with projectiles and eliminates all of them, rendering the fort defenseless. The world is seen in shambles. 
rebels as the wall titans extends to different countries, stomping and crushing people from different parts of the world. Truly a gruesome sight. Historia back in Paradise, guarded by the Jaegerist, is seen giving birth. At this point, with all hopes lost in Fort Salta, Armin's team arrive aiming straight for the Beast Titan. The flying boat is struck by several projectiles and the left wing is destroyed. Armin orders the Beast Titan to be top priority target and as Anya Kapoon maneuvers the damaged ship directly over the Founding Titan, Titan, the crew jump and attaches themselves to various spines protruding from the back of the founding titan. Both Reiner and Peak jump as well, transforming into their respective titan. The group eventually notices that Zeke's beast titan dissolved soon after Reiner defeated it, alerting them that Zeke was not even inside. The others retreat so Armin can transform into the colossal titan, however before Armin can do that, he is captured and swallowed by another type of beast titan that was formed resembling an Okapi. At this point many more titans begin to spawn on top of the founding titan's back. Pierk realizes that these titans that they are facing are resurrected versions of the nine titans from over the last 2000 years. Even more recent titans are sent, from Ymir's jaw titan to Bertolt's colossal titan and even both Marcel's and Porco's titans. Pierk in her cart titan awaits the other titans to reach Eren's nape, but as soon as she prepares to detonate the explosives, she is stabbed with several spikes made from a former warhammer titan. At the same time, Reiner in his armored titan is bested by Bertolt's resurrected colossal titan and flung at all the other soldiers, knocking Connie unconscious and damaging their vertical maneuvering equipment. As they hung stranded underneath the founding titan, they are saved by the arrival of Falco's jaw titan and carried away before the zombie titans can apprehend them. As they approach Fort Salta, the team tries to come up with their next move. Gabby reveals that when Eden's founding titan spawned in Shiganshina, a large centipede creature erupted from his body that reconnected his neck. Finally deduced that this large centipede hallucinogen type creature must be the core to the founding titan power. This leads them to believe that the large centipede hallucinogen creature will pop out once again if Eden's founding titan head and neck are separated once more. Due to his injuries, Levi decides to stay aboard on the flying jaw titan and provide support with Gabby whilst the others return to the founding titan and split into two teams. Mikasa, Connie and Annie will track down the titan that took Armin while Jean and Reiner travels down the head and Nate where the explosives remain wrapped around the Founding Titan's neck. Falco in his flying jaw titan avoids a barrage of arrows shot towards them from the various Warhammer Titans and after dropping off both teams he continues circling around the Founding Titan so Gabby can feel useful and disable the Titans with her rifle. As Reiner lands on the ginormous Founding Titan's ribs, he in his armored titan form gets overrun by the numerous Warhammer Titans and is repeatedly shot and stabbed with arrows and spikes generated by them. Having been pinned down near the nape of the Founding Titan, Pierre emerges from the cart titan and begins to repeatedly transform and tear apart numerous titans nearby. Towards the rear end of the Founding Titan, Annie in her female titan form is tossed around several times by Bertolt's colossal titan. This beatdown starts to worry the team about their plan. However, Mikasa spots the Akapi titan that took Armin and signals to Annie to throw her towards it. Despite this, more titans spawns and corner Mikasa whilst keeping her and the others away from the Akapi Titan. At this point with the team feeling seemingly lost, without warning many of the spawned legacy titans begin to turn against the others and provide support for the team. This was all due to Armin who encountered Zeke Jaeger within the realm of the path and the two managed to awaken several of the predecessors including Ymir, the Galliad brothers, Bertolt, Grisha Jaeger, Eren Kruger and even Tom Kasaver asking them to lend their strength. Zeke is able to convince all of them to utilize their titans to fight the founding titan. Taking advantage of the turn of events, Levi on top of the flying jaw titan was able to spot the position of the Akapi titan and instructs Gabby to shoot it down. Mikasa at the same time coordinates to slice apart the titan's jaw, freeing Armin. Armin now back from the realm of the path into the living, blasts the Akapi titan off the founding titan with a thunder spear. Connie frees him completely by severing the titan's tongue as Zeke emerges from the founding titan and calls out to Levi. To give him some reassurance and to fulfill his promise, Zeke remarks about how life truly is worth living and that he was unworthy in life to notice it before. Levi flies over and swiftly decapitates him before returning back to the jaw titan. With Zeke's head lopped off, the rumbling stops. This gives the team the opportunity to blow off Eren's founding titan neck from the rest of the ginormous rib caged body. As Pick begins to reach her breaking point, Jean takes her away, informing her about the explosives that is still slung around Eren's founding titan's neck. Jean takes
takes her to safety and then detonates the explosives. The head of the founding titan is blown off and as it falls to the ground, the hallucinogenic creature resurfaces to try to reconnect it with the head. But Reiner is there to wrestle with it away from Eren's skull before it can make contact. Armin now back from the realms of the path, which is new resolve, plans to kill Eren by morphing into the colossal titan. Sean meets up with Pierre and the others on the jaw titan, whilst Falco returns to Fort Saltar. Armin is held in the hands of Kaseva's beast titan and Bertolt's colossal titan, who praises their forefathers for assisting them in achieving their goal. Armin then transforms and uses the force of the explosion to blow apart the rest of the founding titan's corpse. Eren's rumbling comes to a stop as the wall titans immobilizes as there is no founding titan left to control them. The Serbi Corps and the Malian warriors return to Fort Saltar, with the warriors being reunited with their loved ones as Falco lands. The Serbi Corps reflects on how they were able to do the seemingly impossible and put an end to the rumbling. Reiner's armored titan slowly rises from the crater, whilst Armin's colossal titan emerges uninjured. They all assume that Eren was killed because of the large volume of steam in the area. However, suddenly a large flash comes from the crater and Eren emerges in a titan body similar in appearance and size to the colossal titan. Armin and his titan confronts him and vows to stay till the end. Reiner also notices that the hallucinogenous source has survived and it's letting out a mysterious gas which is floating towards the fort. The residents of Fort Salta notices this and Connie realizes that this gas is similar to the one that was ejected in Rokago village and converted the people into titans. So Levi hastily tells Mikasa and Pierre to board Falco with him and flee, realizing what's about to happen. Jean and Connie are left behind, relying on the others to complete the mission. Shortly after, Gabby, Mr. Leonhard, Karina and the rest of the Eldians are transformed into pure titans, diving off the plateau to guard the hallucinogenous source from Reiner. Annie and Pierre transforms into the titan form to assist Reiner against the source, but the swarms of titan quickly overwhelms all of them. Armin is also beaten by Eren's titan, whilst Levi tries to convince Mikasa to focus, as her Akamon blood fights against the changes of the memory manipulation her mind went through. Mikasa regains the memories of her and Eren that they lived through in an alternative scenario, a universe if Eren and Mikasa just ran away when they had the chance and lived life together peacefully away in a cabin. Mikasa wakes up from this reality and rejects Eren's request of promising her to forget about him. Her memories resurfacing gave Mikasa the resolve to carry out what she must do. Now knowing that Eren is inside of the mouth of the giant like attack titan, Mikasa apprehends to finish the job as Levi fires a thunder spear that blows some of Eren's teeth apart, allowing Mikasa to pass through. Eren's head and spine are dangling from the roof of the titan's mouth. Mikasa is quickly taken aback when Eren stares at her and acknowledges her presence. However quickly, she snaps out of it and pledges to remember Eren always. She then severs his head and kisses Eren goodbye, while Ymir watches. This death of Eren Jaeger fundamentally stops the rumbling for good. Ymir Fritz is freed and the power of the titans disappear. All and any effect that the founding titan had also dissipates, as every Aldean affected by the founding titan's memory manipulation, along with Eren's, starts to remember everything, even the encounter they had with him in the realm of the path. Armin remembers his conversation with Eren, who explained to him why he had to do the rumbling, how Ymir Fritz, the founding titan, was yearning from freedom, which she was bounded by from her agony of love. Ymir was waiting for the right person, and that person was Mikasa, who had to reenact the choice of giving up love for the greater good. To Eren, the past, the future and present all existed at once. All he was doing was moving forwards. Eren had to do it because he was shown that was the only way. He also told Armin his true feelings. Where Eren confessed his love for Mikasa and also depended on Armin to save humanity. After remembering this conversation, Armin wakes up in awe. He hugs Eren's head which Mikasa holds and cries out loud. All of his friends also confesses what they remember, where Eren even explained to Connie that his mother would turn back into a human. The spirit of the dead Aldians who are trapped in the realm of the path alongside Ymir are released, where the survey corps says their final goodbyes to Levi. Sasha also sends her farewells, as Mikasa sees the final spirit of Ymir Fritz, who was the one viewing the world through her eyes all this time. Mikasa gives her final goodbyes to Ymir, as she too, like the other spirits, finally are put to rest. All of the surviving Aldians who were turned into pure titans are transformed back into humans, but are quickly confronted by those of the Malian military. However, both sides learns that the titans are no more due to the death of Eren Jaeger, which 
which Armin claims responsibility for. Now the Aldians no longer being titans or the possibility of becoming one are no longer a threat to the world. Three years passes from the rumbling, which they dubbed the Battle of Heaven and Earth. Historia's child has grown and she's living peacefully with her husband. The world has significantly changed since Eren's rumbling as majority of the population was wiped away. The survivors of the battle embark to Paradis as ambassadors for Mali to begin peace negotiations. As they sail for the island, they read a letter from Historia which explains that the remaining Jaegerists have formed an army to defend Paradis from the threat of the outside world. However, the outside world including Mali has changed with adopting equality for all which is shown by Anya Kapoon, Gabby, Falco and Levi living life in Mali very peacefully, dressed as normal citizens in the prospering city. Mikasa is also shown in visiting Eren's grave, where she buried his head under the tree they used to hang around. Many years passes as Aldia flourishes until once again war breaks out. Soon Aldia is demolished with nothing but rubbles around. However, the tree Eren's head was buried beneath is miraculously untouched. As centuries goes by, this tree grows even larger and larger until it becomes a gigantic tree, like the one Ymir Fritz as a child fell upon. A young child with their dog eventually stumbles across it, revealing that this very tree has an opening. With that guys, that's the end of Attack on Titan. The timeline has concluded and we hope you guys enjoyed this journey. If you lot reached the end, then let us know down below by typing Sasageo. Anyway guys, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't. Ding the notification bell to stay updated with all our other content. Till then, we'll catch you next time.